Alright, so at the end of last lecture, we have successfully configured the storage and defensing device that are going to be used with our cluster. Now, let's start configuring our cluster nodes themselves. Let's go to node 1. I'm gonna switch to root, or you will have to use sudo whenever you want to issue a command of the ones that we are going to issue of the ones that we are going to use now okay and we are going to install the following packages yum y install pcs pcs is short for the pacemaker which is the package or the service that is used to provide the clustering capabilities of linux or centos in our case fence under dash agents dash all of course the iSCSI initiator package SCSI iSCSI dash initiator dash utils and we are going to of course need the httpd package which is the apache web server this is the application or the service that we need to be or that we need to make highly available okay it's yum dash y install and let's leave it to install the required packages while at the same time taking a copy of this command because we are going to need it go to the second node in our cluster maximize so su dash and let's paste Okay, and it's going to download and install required packages. Let's have a look here. Okay, it's almost done. Just a few seconds. And here it has started downloading the packages. In a few moments, both of them are going to be ready. Okay, so now the installation is complete on both of the machines, CentOS 1 and CentOS and CentOS 2. Now, starting from this point forward, I'm going to use the Mac terminal, the Mac terminal in order to connect to those machines and start working with them. So as I can open two shells at the same time, like this. And now I can log into the first machine like this. 192.168.66.102 So this is CentOS 1 Same thing I can do here and This is CentOS 2 So now I am at both of the machines We are going to ensure that the commands that we, are, we run here are running on the other one So the first thing we need to do is to ensure that both machines can talk to each other using their host names rather than their IP addresses. So I'm gonna go to the hosts file of each machine. Okay, and let's add the IP address of both of them. 192.168.56.102 that is CentOS-1 and 103 that is CentOS-2. Let's copy this text because we are going to Paste it in the other node. So in here, same thing. We're gonna do vim slash etc slash hosts. And we are going to add the same line here. So now both machines are able to talk to each other or communicate to each other using their host names instead of their IP addresses. The second thing we need to do is to configure the password for a user that has been created once we install the PCS package which is called HA cluster. We have a look here, HA cluster is a user that got installed. We need to set the password for this user, of course, using the root account or the root privilege. So it's sudo pass wd HA cluster. And let's add a password for this user. And of course, it is a very good idea to set the same password for the user on both, on both nodes. 
so that it is easier to remember and to avoid any confusion. Okay, now we also need to configure the firewall rules to enable access of the um, cluster ports. So firewall CMD dash dash permanent dash dash add dash service equals high availability. Okay, there was a typing mistake, availability. Okay, and of course we will need to issue firewall dash cmd reload. Sorry, it's dash dash reload. Of course we are going to need to do the same command on the other machine. So let's copy and paste it here. And also copy and paste this command here. Now our firewall is configured. We are going to start this cl the cluster services. So sudo system cdl start pcsd dot service, which is the pacemaker service or the cluster service. We are also going to enable the service to be started on system boot so that if you reboot the system, cluster will always always get started sudo systemctl enable pcsd dot service of course the same thing is going to be done on the second node so let's copy and paste and again copy and paste okay now let's uh, create a cluster from node 1, let's clear the screen. This is going to be done from only one node. We're going to do it from node 1. Issue the following command. PCS cluster. PCS is the pacemaker, as we mentioned. Oath. This will configure the authentication. CentOS-1, CentOS-2. This is going to authenticate those nodes, CentOS1 and CentOS2, to the cluster using the HA cluster user. If I press enter, it's going to ask me for the username. I may have to use sudo for this command so as not to make any bio privilege errors. So the user is HA cluster. Going to enter the password that I have just configured. In a few moments, it's going to configure authentication. Remember, this is done from only one node. So now I'm going to start um, setting up the cluster by using the command PCS cluster setup dash dash start dash dash name let's give it a name I'm gonna call it CentOS cluster just like that and just give it the name of your node CentOS dash one and CentOS dash two it's going to stop any instances of the pacemaker on both clusters. It's going to start it again and it's going to synchronize certificates on both nodes. And then restart the pacemaker on both nodes and finish the cluster configuration. It's going to just take a few seconds to complete. Okay, it's done. And finally, we will need to use sudo pcs cluster enable dash dash all now the cluster is enabled if you want to check your work just type pcs cluster status just like that as you can see here we have two nodes configured but we don't have any resources configured yet we are going to do that in the next lesson and if you have a look here at the pcsd status or the pacemaker status gonna see that centos 1 is online and centos 2 is online we have just finished setting up our cluster. In the coming lesson, we are going to start configuring the resources that are going to be used by the cluster. We have two resources. We have the IP address that is going to be shared among the nodes. We also have the fencing device and the storage that is also going to be shared among both nodes of the cluster. That is going to be done starting from next lesson. So until then, take care. All right, welcome back. So far, we have configured a cluster on CentOS-1 and CentOS-2 nodes, but it does not have any resources, it does not have any services to offer. So let's clear the screen on both nodes. 
let's create our first resource which is going to be the disk so before we start defining the disks we need to log in to our iSCSI target we all we have already installed the iSCSI initiator so all what we have to do is let's just go to root so as just to type the command without sudo and let's use the iSCSI ADM command to discover the IQN of the disk we're going to give it the IP address of our iSCSI machine which was 192.168.56.110 and if you received an error like this this might be a good indication that you will need to configure the firewall on the target machine so let's go to our iSCSI machine and let's use the firewall dash config to open the GUI of the firewall and let's just add a port in here add the iSCSI port which is 3260 TCP okay now if you go back try the same command you can see that it responds with the IQN of the disk immediately take a note of this IQN we are going to do the same thing here on the second machine CentOS 2 let's just copy and paste this command in here okay we have the IQN address of the disk and as you can see here it is the same IQN just to make sure that they are both pointing at the same disk now having determined the IQN of the target disk I can again use the iSCSI ADM command in order to gain access to this disk by using dash M node dash T capital and then give it the IQN address of the disk just like that dash P one one two one six eight to fifty six to one ten which is the IP address of the iSCSI machine dash L for login okay and pressing enter as you can see here it logged in successfully to the target machine let's again copy and paste this command on our second node to also log in to the target machine now let's use system CDL restart iSCSI D and system CDL enable iSCSI D this will ensure that the iSCSI initiator is started and it will always get started when the system boots gonna have to issue those same commands on our next machine okay now if you use the fdisk command dash l and grab sd you're gonna find that now we have two new disks added sdb and sdc if you have this same command copied to your second machine you're going to see that again we have sdb and sdc and notice that they have the same size they also have the same IQ and this is the shared storage that we were trying to achieve now both nodes have access to this shared storage on the iSCSI target machine and now we can use this storage to create a resource on our cluster so since we have this information let's see the unique identifier of this disk on the machine by using ls-l slash dev slash disk then by id press enter you can see that you have a lot of output okay this needs to be I'm going to change the color of this uh, terminal because this will not be visible okay let's change this color to be same thing here okay now it's a little more visible to you we have or we need to have a look at the wwn of sdb and sdc which happens to be those ones this is the unique identifier of the disk sdb this is the unique identifier of the disk sdc okay if we issue this that same command here slash ls dev disk by id you're gonna find that we have the same wwn for sdb and sdc and that is exactly what we are after we need to have the same id on both machines so the next thing we're going to do is to configure the fencing device so let's clear the screen on node 1 and 
A fencing device, as we mentioned earlier, allows the cluster to isolate the node when it becomes irresponsive to avoid any data corruption. So issue the following command on node 1, PCS, stoneth, and stoneth is short for shoot the other node in the head. It is just a, an acronym or a statement that indicates what this command or what this feature is doing. It is just used to identify a failing node and isolate it away of the, away of the cluster. It just grabs any resources or services that this node is utilizing in order not to cause any data corruption to preserve the integrity of the data that the service running on the cluster is handling. So we are going to use this stoneth device. We're creating create us scuzzy underscore fencing underscore device fence underscore scuzzy pcmk underscore host underscore list will be the list of hosts centos dash one space centos dash two pcmk underscore monitor underscore action will be equal to between double quotes metadata then pcmk underscore reboot underscore action is off then finally the devices equal then we are going to have to copy the fencing device which is sdc just copy this wwn so it's slash dev slash disk by id and paste the wwn of the disk and finally meta provides equals unfencing it is a long command i know but it is fairly easy to understand. It just creates a fencing device, SCSI fencing device, and it defines that this fencing device is going to be responsible for the following hosts, CentOS 1 and CentOS 2. Then you are defining a monitor action to be on the metadata, and you're turning out the reboot action. Finally, you're giving it the device that is going to be used for fencing. Okay, let's click on enter. Okay, and the fencing device has been created. So by now we have successfully created the fencing device for our cluster. In the incoming lesson, we are going to start creating the storage device for the cluster, the shared storage that is going to be movable between both nodes. And this storage is going to hold our files, our web application files. So until next lesson, take care.